Hello guys! Continuing with our series on basic skills for physics, we will work on formulas today. The basic idea is that we are going to use properties of equality to solve formulas for a given variable, just as if we were solving a one-variable equation. The main difference between an equation and a formula is that we can actually solve the formula for any of the variables involved, depending on what they request. All of the ideas and strategies that we discussed in the previous video can be applied to this process as well, in case you want to go and check that one out before watching this. For practice, I will ask you to pause the video and try things on your own before actually explaining the way I will do this. I think it will be a good exercise for you to try first and check second if you got it right. So. In the case of this first example, it is easy to see that we want the variable t all on its own, and we can do that by leaving it on the right-hand side. The important part to notice here is that you can actually divide by both variables n and r at the same time. You do not need to do it one by one. If you divide by nr, what you get is pb divided by nr is equal to nrt divided by nr. You can easily cancel n and r because you only have multiplications and divisions. Therefore, your final answer is that T, the temperature, is equal to the quotient of pressure times volume divided by the number of moles times the constant for ideal gases. In case you are curious about this, this is called the ideal gas law and it refers to the behavior of a gas in terms of pressure volume, amount of gas, and temperature in the absolute scale. In the next example, they want us to solve for a variable that is being added to another expression. In this case, it is important to know that you can actually subtract because they have an addition, and you can subtract the whole product Vt. You can't just move the V or the T by themselves. You, you need to move them both at the same time. So we have final position minus velocity time is equal to initial position. And that is your final answer. This is a kinematics equation where each of the X's refers to an initial and final positions. V represents the velocity of the object and T represents the time interval for the motion. For this next example, we are discussing what we call centripetal force acting on an object that moves in circular motion. M represents the mass of the object. V is the speed at which the object is moving. R is the radius of the circular trajectory the object describes. For a case like this, where a variable you want is in the denominator, you first have to multiply times that variable so that you get it out of the denominator. Let us try that on our own and see if we can get to the final answer without help. Pause the video and try it. Ok, if we go step by step, one way to grab the solution is fr is equal to mv squared. After that, you divide by the force to leave the radius alone. Therefore, the final answer is mv squared 
divided by f. Now, for the next example, we have a bit of a dilemma because you need to solve for a, the acceleration of an object that is changing velocity. Oh, please pause the video and try to solve this on your own. So, from an algebraic point of view, this is slightly more complicated because the acceleration is apparently undergoing two operations. You have a multiplication on the right hand side and an addition on the left side. However, it is the addition that needs to concern us first because you cannot separate the multiplication unless the addition is taken care of. Therefore, you first subtract initial velocity so that you get final velocity minus initial velocity is equal to acceleration times time interval. Once you have it like that, you are now able to divide by the time interval which you could not do before. Your final result then is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time interval is equal to the acceleration. It is important to check that the two variables, final and initial velocities, are inside of your fraction. This sort of algebraic process takes some practice, but I am sure you will get the hang of it. Finally, I want you to consider solving for R on an equation that is full of reciprocal expressions like this one. Pause the video and try to come up with a solution to this equation, and let us continue after that. In this case, there are basically two strategies that you can follow. In the first one, you can multiply the whole equation times the least common denominator r, r1, r2. The result is r1. r2 is equal to r, r2, plus r, r1. You may now factor the, the r out as a common factor, getting r1, r2, equal to r times r2 plus r1. You can now divide by the expression in the parentheses, r2 plus r1, getting r equal to r1, r2, divided by r1 plus r2, where I have taken a few liberties flipping symbols where it does not really matter. I told you there could be a second strategy. In that case, you could first take the greatest common denominator of r1 and r2, so that you write the right-hand side as one fraction only. The result is r2 plus r1 over r1 r2. You can now multiply times r and multiply times r1 r2 to get r1 r2 is equal to r2 plus r1 times r. So, now you can divide by the parentheses and you get the exact same result as before. You should try this over and over with different formulas until you get proficient at it. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed these ideas. I will see you next time.